Ladies and gentlemen, if you're aware of Crobe Cat, an absolute legend on YouTube, this man crawls out of his cave once a year to string together multi-million viewing videos where he cobbles all the worst takes in video gaming and basically just spells it out to the idiots who support this dog shit. So without further ado, folks, you will see some of his edits with mine. And of course, yours truly's edits will be stamped with a Kung Fu hot dog stamp seal of approval. Am I ready for the Game Awards? No. How do you play? Just play the game. Right now, you're going to meet a new character from the world of Uncharted 4. Oh. You're going to give it to me. Really? I'm afraid I'm spoken for. Let's see what you've got. What the fuck is this? I don't know. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if I look a bit blown out today, well, it's a Saturday evening. It's 10.33 and I've been pulled away from staring at Milo Kunis's lovely cleavage in the Mike Judge film Extract and in the kitchen at the same time preparing tomorrow's food where I dropped a whole scotch bonnet pepper in the pressure cooker and it blew my sockets out. But here I am because I just sat down and I watched Smash JT walking on Laguna Beach and breaking this news story. <coughs> But anyway, Jeff Keighley, the man who's married to a man. Yep, I love saying that because every time I do, my subscribers say, but why do you keep saying that, Jace? Because if you say something long enough, it soon becomes the truth. And unfortunately, I don't think that message has gotten through to Jeff Keighley because guess what? I cannot believe this is the story that Smash JT broke and by the time you see this video, folks, it'll be on a Sunday afternoon that I'll actually have this video uploaded because I want to go and watch Robin Hood Prince of Thieves in a minute. Yes, hallelujah, it's the video show. And now, the man the BBC calls... Jason King on Kung Fu Hot Dog. I got to go down to the show with my dad in LA and put on a suit and like see all these game developers. And I think as a young kid, it made a huge impression on me that there was this kind of like celebration of games. From NeoGAF, Jeff Keighley is attempting to trademark the phrase Game Awards with the US Patent Office. That is the worst idea I've ever heard in my life, Tom. Yes, yes, it's horrible, this idea. Meaning no one else will be able to host an award show with the words Game Awards on it. It's absolutely, it's nuts. It really is. Worse, he's emailing fans. That will be people like Jeff Miller or Greg Miller. I would not be the person, we would not be the people we are today if it wasn't for video games. So thank you, each and every one of you who do, does this, makes video games. Thank you for your art and know that we are forever in your debt. IGN, all those outlets, Polygon that are that come under the banner of the Game Awards, or as I jokingly tweeted at Jeff tonight, how about you swap my award for yours, Jeff? Because I'm sure he'll like my gay placard, even though I'm not. Worse, he's been emailing the fans, as I've just said. And if you take a closer look at this here, folks, from a guy called Moriarty, who again was probably better than Sherlock Holmes, in my opinion. Uh, has actually provided screenshots of what's actually going on. It's really insane, folks. This thing is really absolutely blowing up. And look, Jeff Keighley, as far as I'm concerned, is the man who destroyed E3. I used to look forward to E3 so much back in the day. But of course, when all that stuff happened behind the scenes, I think it was 2019 or 2020, where Jeff Keighley flat out refused to have nothing to do anymore with the E3 showrunners because apparently they weren't protecting information. And Jeff Keighley had said that he didn't like what was going on behind the scenes. Thank you so much. Ed? <laughs> And 
remember when Jeff Keighley did an AMA a few years ago. So literally like the name suggests, you can ask me anything. Somebody blatantly asked Jeff, why did you leave E3? Why did you abandon it? He didn't bother to answer, despite the fact that it was going to be a no holds barred questionnaire, ask me anything you want to. But Jeff, if he was a boxer, he'd be um, a, he'd be a featherweight because he would get in there. Uh, I think Jeff, if you put him up against Mike Tyson in his decrepit state at the moment, yeah, I think Jeff might actually have half a chance of beating that behemoth. But honestly, when I heard this, and Smash said something on his video as well, regarding the fact that the NFL uh, patented uh, the phrase Super Bowl, which blew my mind. Now cast your mind, folks, to the year 2021, I believe, with Ubisoft. Yes, those morons who gave us this. <laughs> And you remember they had a game called Gods and Monsters. Everybody was excited about this until suddenly everything got delayed behind the scenes. Ubisoft was saying, yeah, we've still got time to flesh this game out, but there was a dispute between them and Monster Energy Drink because get this, apparently according to that energy drinks firm, I didn't know they were that big, like in terms of the clout they had, but because they were in the gaming sphere at the time promoting their energy drink, they were able to say successfully in a US court that if Ubisoft releases this game called Gods and Monsters, people will get a bit confused and think, um, but I came here to buy an energy drink, not the video game. So hence why it got retitled Immortals Phoenix Rising to avoid any kind of confusion. Huh. Immortals Phoenix Rising, available December 3rd. Wow. I guess there was a financial stake at play regarding Monster Energy Drinks. That's the only thing I can put it down to. The fact they were able to kick Ubisoft in the nuts and say, you can't use the term monsters. I mean, again, why didn't Monster Energy Drink go after the crisps, Monster Munch? So surely when you go to an, a supermarket and you see the Monster Munch on the left-hand side of the aisle, and then on the right, it's going to be the Monster Energy Drink. I'm pretty sure the customer will be absolutely confused, scratching their heads, then their bums, thinking, <laughs> which one do I choose, Sensei? It's going to be an episode of Cobra Kai. Now, Jeff Keighley, I, I've always referred to him as a, well, he is a sociopath when you think about it. This is the same guy who has had the same email address since time began. But as Smash JT said, the whole point why we've got to revolt, we are the new wave media, because if Jeff gets his way and that name is patented, as Smash said, you can call it Jeff Keighley's Game Award Show. That's fine. So here are the Game of the Year forerunners or frontrunners, or in this case, the foreskin runners, Astrobot, which I have heard is... Why is this even on the list? Number two, Metaphor Refantasio. Again, I've heard about it, but I've not uh, seen any gameplay. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which is interesting because it's got Sweet Baby Ink tinted all over it. Uh, Balatro, don't know what that is. Silent Hill 2, which again, might be a bit of a sympathy vote for Team Booba. Number six. <laughs> How can Dragon Age the Veil Guard be on this list? What is going on? I thought a game, oh, that's probably why they released it on Halloween to make sure they, well, actually, wait a minute. I thought the deadline had passed for nominees to be submitted. Maybe I'm wrong, but again, it's strange that a game like this ends up on the nominee list so quickly. Is it pre-planned? It probably is. So, so far, Six nominations. Wow, way to go, Jeff. Such momentum, such engagement with your audiences out there. Here's the thing. 
The gaming industry is an interactive experience where you, you feel it have, in your you heart. You did a lot of films, and now you're in games. Games, yeah. right? You know, I, I've done six features, but I don't yeah. care. But okay, we're here to talk about a way out. Let's do yes. that. Yeah, let's get into your game. I'm All sorry, right, I'm so. a little bit. No, no, I'm, I, I'm a little bit. I think Hell Divers Two is meant to be on here as well as a possibility, but this is the actual list of nominees so far from Ollie Welsh from Polygon, another woke outlet. Uh, but Jeff Moriarty, Jeff Moriarty, I was gonna say that Jeff Keeley is the Terminator. He cannot be stopped. He cannot be reasoned with. And if you don't put a stop to him very, very soon, folks, he's gonna stomp all over your favorite video game franchises. People like Microsoft are on Jeff's side, right? Because think about it, this is the same Microsoft who says curvy females must be banned from video games. We cannot have those problematic designs. We need to have things that cater for the modern audience, right? So if you've got those allies against you, uh, as in you the gamer, but they side on the, oh, the fairy tale whimsical musical fantasy that is Jeff Keighley and his gay boy band, well, I don't know what else to say, folks. This is an absolutely rip-roaringly, not even a funny story, because if it goes one way, the way that we don't want it to, then I don't know what to do, folks. And just a little bit of a mention to side scrollers, um, a channel that I watch most times of the week because it actually comes on at a very good time in the UK, which is 5 p.m. Um, obviously, uh, Craig, who stuttering Craig, who runs that show and has got his own game awards show that is coming up towards the end of or before Christmas. Again, it. I wonder if Jeff Keighley has seen that and see the amount of subscribers that stuttering Craig has. And he's thinking, ah, you know what? Uh, we we got to put a stop to that. We can't have gamers um, doing their own ve um, uh, homemade game award shows that are being paid for like a one on one time only fee, sponsor fee from your subscribers. Oh, we can't have that. It's got to be my way or the highway. Again, the amount of money that Jeff puts into his shows, he has to scramble to get people like Hideo Kojima to make a guest appearance and I'm sure he's going to do one this year for his friend Jeff Wee and uh, you get all these advertisements people that come Al Pacino I think was a guest at, at one stage um, but I did like that kid who came up on stage and was talking about uh, Bill Clinton or Bill Gates to thank everybody and say that I think I want to nominate this award to uh, my reformed orthodox <laughs> rabbi bill clinton thank you everybody now something that did occur to me as well i don't know if you heard this rumor but andrew wilson yes the android over at ea games has been supposedly approached by disney to replace bob Iger. i say disney if you really want to get your brand where it needs to be why don't you just take jeff keely away from us and let somebody else run their very own games award show. I think that's a rather good idea. But honestly, folks, this has been an exhausting video to make. I'm amazed I made it through it thus far. And uh, yes, I'm off to watch Robin Hood Prince of Thieves now in my living room and to look at my contents of that pressure cooker to make sure it doesn't blow my socks off in the morning. So if I were you and if you were me, Please make sure you return for the next video. That Terminator is out there. It can't be bargained with. It's time to talk about something really important right now. Uh, the Alienware Steam Machine is $100 off. You can play thousands of games on the Steam Machine. It can't be reasoned with. It doesn't feel pity. Or remorse. Or fear. And it absolutely will not stop. Ever until you are dead. Look, the Oscars should fuck themselves up. This is the shit. I'm telling you, this is, this is the real shit. What is this? Is this that, that interactive gaming?